folks, it's been a while since I've been reviewing bows, but for the past few years, a lot of things have changed, especially after COVID. Um, some of these companies are starting to re-innovate uh, by making other designs, by improving their quality, or just making um, exotic products. So I wanna start getting into some of it. This one is gonna be about reviewing an AFR tree. Let's t take it apart. Um, so I got two bowls here. One is a new fiberglass Mongol bowl, but uh, I'll do that in another video. And this other one is bowl strings here. So for this video, I'll be reviewing this AF Archery Tatar bow that they made. Very beautiful. It's got the blue glossy look on the front and the back. As you can see, there's the logo right there. EFR tree and 50 pounds right here. What I don't like about this is that they don't write 50 pounds at what draw length. That's important, especially in Asiatic archery if people want to draw 35, 32. From the, from the composition, of course it's not a historical composition where it's horn sinew. So we got the wood core at the riser, quite a modern design but sandwiched with bamboo on the front and the back and then fiberglass I believe is the final sandwich between the front and back but they use bare paw fiberglass so it's very high quality fiberglass now when you transition to the sia you start seeing the same thing with the bamboo um, goes all the way along and then you have a hardwood at the sia so this is not trying to be you know historical in terms of material composition and because of how glossy it is um, the historical bows wouldn't look like this. They would have, um, you know, sinew on the back and then horn on the belly. Uh, sometimes the horn can be glossy, but the, the sinew uh, usually is protected with birch bark. Not to mention the sia transition here. On the fiberglass bows at the very least, the sias are pure wood transitioned into the fiberglass bar. But on a laminate bow, um, you can see it's quite a modern construction where it's still composite throughout where the bamboo, uh, um, the, the sias, it's, it's the same consistent composition but just added the hardwood to create that static tips. So when it comes to the historical shape, this, when it's unstrung, I wouldn't say is the best representation of a Tatar bow of the Crimean era because a lot of the Crimean Tatar bows are heavily reflexed um, to give you a lot more efficiency. Uh, but those are much harder to string and I can see the practicality of uh, bringing it down a bit so that you know users can string this more easily than a reflex bow like those Korean ones but perhaps those are the elite Crimean Tatar bows I would assume the less reflex bows were used for soldiers or when a bow becomes used for a long time it will start becoming more and more deflex with these horn composites or when a bow is strung for a long time when you unstring it it takes a while for it to go back to the reflex shape so yes, this can be a, a representation of Tatar bow when it's just strong, but over time those Korean Tatar bows, especially the elite ones, will reflex back to the uh, initial C shape, unless there's damage of course, and depending on the, the, the quality of the bow of course. There you go, bow is strong, and now it represents quite well as, as a Tatar bow, especially in Eastern Europe, uh, Central Asia in the 15th century, I'd say, for a cavalry bow. Um, Tatar bows in comparison to say like an Ottoman bow, they shoot um, larger, heavier arrows, relatively speaking. Um, so an Ottoman arrow like this for, for a Tatar bow would be actually a little bit small. Um, but you wouldn't be shooting something, I would say this big, this, this is a uh, ancient <laughs> Persian Ira Iranian arrow. And it wouldn't be this big, so it would be in between these two. Uh, the, the techniques you would use, there are people mentioning Slavic draw with the one finger like this. So this could, be, could have been used according to Arab archery. Of course, you can have standard Mediterranean draw mentioned by Byzantines. You can have with a chess anchor point here uh, or, or a more conventional anchor point. Um, thumb draws, of course, would have been used as well. Yeah, it's about 50 pounds to 28. It's a very light bow. I would assume this arrow would shoot pretty fast. Um, they also have takedown versions, which is really good for people who want to travel. Um, String is modern. I believe it's some kind of, it's not Dacron. I think it's the the one that stretches less. I think it's similar to the BCY material. 
there's only so much we can do indoors. So let's get out and shoot this thing. Okay, let's do some shooting in the wild. You don't have to walk here. I really like this bow. It's similar to a lot of the other laminate bows of its type, but it's very fast. Um, I think AFR Tree does a good job now improving their quality. And with the bear paw glass, you really get that reliability. Um, shoots pretty fast, I'd say. There you go. Follow up shot. Nice. And then I'll do thumb draw later. Close it. Oh, that's powerful. With that much power stroke, it, it is shooting with power. <laughs> pounds at 28 thumb draw 182 FPS 50 pounds 28 Mediterranean draw 171 FPS well the bulbs performing pretty good I like how fast it shoots for a laminate bulb and as you can see with the chronograph um, for the GPP it's not bad uh, which is quite expected but for the price, I'd say it's fair. Now, cosmetically, it's very beautiful, as you can see. Performance-wise, it's performing like any other bare paw glass um, laminated bow, I'd say, from China, um, which is decent quality and shoots pretty fast. I will say, though, I wish they innovated with more bow shapes because um, the reflex, deflex, reflex, this kind of shape gets boring over time. It'd be nice to experiment with some other designs like Cretan, bows um, some of them I've seen like the air, also the ancient Arab bows where it's just reflex deflex like a gold wing um, that would be nice to see there's other shapes as well Mughal designs that it seems like they took that off the market maybe it wasn't durable enough I'm not sure there's the Persian designs um, it would be nice to experiment with other uh, shapes because the reflex deflex reflex um, yes it's widely used but it's nice to see some other designs also I think Bronze Age bows don't get enough love and another kind of shape I think would be interesting for people is just a simple D-shape. You know, I think simple D-shape bows made of quality laminate um, designs with a historical handle, I think would get much more love um, because most of the D-shape bows you see today um, are made of wood, but it'd be nice to see them with laminate glass to see how they perform as well. Um, a lot of the historical bows are made of D-shape and they're often forgotten because I guess we just think they're too boring. Another shape, shape that I recommend is a Yurtsi bow, which is a Syrian kind of bow of 2000 years ago, which is simple reflex and with static tips, and then it wouldn't reflex here. So the main difference is it's straight near the handle, um, almost like a Turkish bow, but then down here it starts straightening out with a straight static tips. That would be nice to see. Also, don't have string bridges on those designs. Be nice to see some other designs other than this, the, the, the shell shell look, the tatar look that you get with a lot of these bows. Other than that, I can't really complain too much. It shoots fast, um, just what you expect from a bear paw glass bow. And I recommend this if you like the cosmetic look. It also has a takedown option. Um, you got the integrated sh uh, string bridges. You have lots of options to customize it to the, lo the, lo the looking you want. And if you, especially if you're doing this for horseback archery competitions, I think this would be a good bow to do because with a takedown design, you can bring it on your backpack, which allows transportation a lot better. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching.